much. Many people are confused by computer languages. You don't need to be. Computer languages are just the ways that we write programs for the computer. And in fact, as a beginner, you'll use the languages that come with a machine. We'll talk about other languages later, but first I'd like to make an important distinction. Computer languages themselves are the commands that you use to write a program that will work for you. But there's another part of the computer that's related to a computer language that we often don't think of, and that's called a computer operating system, sometimes a computer monitor. And what that does is that one is the part of the computer that lets you talk to the computer that makes a connection between all the pieces. When I type on that keyboard and the results appear on the screen, that's not happening automatically. That's a computer operating system doing it for us. Now, we usually assume that that's there, but the difficulty is this, that one of these days you may switch over to a rather different kind of monitor or operating system, and then it comes as a shock if you don't realize that the computer, the way it speaks to you and the way you speak to it, is part of a programming system, and it can be changed. Now, we'll talk a bit about the computer languages that come in the machine. We've seen BASIC already, and we'll be taking more looks at BASIC in the future. BASIC is a nice, simple language. BASIC stands for All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code, and it's quite an easy language for beginners to gain their first familiarity with a computer. Very likely you'll be dealing in BASIC because it's there. When you turn the machine on, it says 38,000 and change bytes, BASIC bytes, free. It's part of the system. So this one comes with a system, but there's something important I'd like to mention about BASIC in a moment. It can be changed. BASIC comes in a ROM chip, a read-only memory chip, and you think perhaps it's frozen forever, carved in stone, written in silicon, if you like. But in fact, it's possible to flip that chip away and to put in its place a different ver version of BASIC, or for that matter, any other language you choose. We'll come back to that in a moment, but I'd like to mention something else. There's another built-in language in this computer. It's the one that really does all the work. It's called machine language, and it's how the machine itself works. Now, the visible thing about machine language is that because it's right inside the circuitry of the machine, it runs very, very quickly. It's fast. Probably that's the cosmetic part of machine language. The important part of machine language is that once you get into it, you get a better understanding of the insides of the machine because everything works by machine language making it happen. Even BASIC is machine language doing all the work for the BASIC language. I'd like to demonstrate to you just a little bit of machine language so that you can appreciate its dazzling speed. If I go over to the computer now, it seems to have a blank screen, I can touch keys, and by touching a key, suddenly the screen fills with characters. So accordingly, if I touch more keys, we can get a different set of characters appearing in the various parts of the screen. Now, machine language is fast. BASIC couldn't possibly fill the screen with characters like that, okay? We can see that we have something working here that's many times, maybe dozens of times faster than BASIC. Let's talk a little bit more about machine language. We certainly aren't going to show you how to program it now. It's not fundamentally difficult, but the thing that you have to keep in mind about machine language, it's a new sort of discipline, and it's a little more mechanical than the basic we use. It's not quite as helpful to us. But for the moment, let's switch into a communication device called the machine language monitor. And here we see a series of hieroglyphics, and now we're no longer talking to BASIC. This is what we call the operating system or monitor. We're talking to the insides of the machine. If I want to display memory, I don't say peak anymore. If I want to print something, I don't say print anymore. I must know the communications language that I have to use here. I suddenly have lost all of my usual BASIC communications. I'll do a simple memory display. That happens to be our program, but unless you've had quite a bit of practice, you're really going to have a lot of trouble reading it. 
Doesn't matter, we'll return back to basic. Basic says ready, and this looks much more familiar. Remember, machine language is in there. If you see the machine doing something with dazzling speed, it's probably the built-in machine language doing it. Now, I'd like to show you something rather different. This is basic, and of course, if I type print uh, 100 plus 22, it prints the answer 122. That's a basic that we've grown to know a little bit. It's not difficult. But as I said before, you can make your own basic. Without having to bring in anything from the outside, without having to plug anything into the back of the machine, we can flip the old basic away and bring in a different basic. I've prepared a very slightly different version of basic in the machine, and if I flip away the standard basic, my basic, which is already stored in this machine, will come to the fore. Let me change that with a simple poke. I'm going to type one, poke 1, 54, but don't you do this unless you also have prepared a basic in memory, because otherwise the regular basic goes away and you don't have any language left. I'll say poke 1, 54, the new basic is working. And one of the few things that I've done to this machine is to say, instead of saying ready, say hello. So this basic, I can say print, as before, 100 plus 22, and it will do so, but when it's finished, it says hello instead of ready. A very small difference. I've had one other. If I put in a line that means nonsense, we know that the standard machine says syntax error for something that makes no sense at all. I've gone into basic, and I've changed that message and so my basic says something slightly different. When I press return, it says idiot error. Now these are small and cosmetic changes, but you do have the capability of making major changes to the basic language if you want to. You're not fixed with any single kind of basic or any single kind of language. And in fact, if you have something in the computer like a word processor or other large thing, you don't need basic at all. You can move it right out and use that memory space for whatever else you'd like to use it for. We'll talk in a moment about the extra languages that can be added to the computer.